Like a lot of people, I see that the numbers of salmon have gone down over time. This is an issue. magnificent wild salmon have fought their way up our rivers and fired our imaginations for thousands of years, but they are now on a path to extinction. For the sake of our natural heritage and for future generations, we have a duty to take action where we can. For some people, stocking salmon into rivers to boost the numbers is an obvious answer. Just add fish. For others, rearing young salmon in hatcheries should never be done under any circumstances. There are times when stocking can make sense, but there are many others where this can do more harm than good to a species already under threat. There are three main approaches to the artificial stocking of young salmon. The stocking to restore salmon, for example, to kickstart a natural population once an underlying problem has been addressed. The stocking to mitigate against a pressure which can't be removed, for example, a dam which may have destroyed natural spawning opportunities or prevented access to habitat and they're stocking to enhance a population with the aim of increasing fish numbers above natural levels. In the past, we followed a policy of enhancement stocking where we were stocking extensively to increase the rod catch. But when we conducted genetic research, it demonstrated that sadly, only a tiny proportion of the fish that we were stocking out were actually returning to be caught by the angler. One of the issues surrounding stocking is that it can be contentious in that by rearing fish in an artificial and somewhat domesticated environment, we're reducing the fitness of those fish. Now what that means is two things. First of all, it means that they're less likely to survive in the wild, to make it out to sea, and to subsequently return as adult fish. And secondly, for those few fish that do return to their native rivers, they're going to produce less eggs than their naturally wild counterparts. So whilst stocking is a very useful tool in the fishery manager's toolbox to mitigate against the impacts of man-made barriers, it's not necessarily the panacea to solve all of the salmon's problems. In terms of a hatchery, um, stocking really is a pointless exercise unless you've fixed all the other problems, ensured that there's good habitat, that the habitat's available for them, and that as juveniles, the smolts are going to have free passage back to sea. So the D used to have a hatchery. However, we found no relationship at all between rod catches and stocking. Nor did we find any relationship between numbers of fish stocked in tributaries and the number of juveniles the following year. In that case, it was that really we hadn't addressed the habitat problems. Fish were still being stocked into poor quality habitat and there was no good habitat to keep them alive over the winter period. Our starting point is that wild salmon are always better than hatchery reared salmon. So while there are things we can do to help our wild salmon stocks, that is where our efforts are going to go to. So that was enhancement stocking. But what about restoring wild salmon in our rivers once a problem has been identified and addressed? Our main thrust here at the moment is using the hatchery in places where salmon have to be restored, what's called restoration stocking. And a good example of that is the River Gary up near Blair Athol. This river was dry for years, the flow has now been restored, and we're using the hatchery to pump prime the restoration of the salmon population. So we're not trying to enhance the whole salmon population in the River Tay, but in very specific areas, using the hatchery, it's a valuable tool. So we've been able to prove that the kelp reconditioning system does work. It produces viable fish that are coming back and they will then subsequently spawn. And in the course of time, we will be able to reduce the amount of stocking 
and ultimately we'll be able to stop it altogether. So we're just basically filling buckets with the same water that the eggs are sitting in. It's just the same river water, so they're kept at a nice even temperature when we transport them into the, up to the river. When we go and look for areas to, to, to put reds in, we try and keep away from bits where wild fish would naturally spawn. We're trying to add to the ecosystem, not, not, not have eggs that will compete with, with wild ones. Like Marek's dug a good deep hole here in this fast flowing bit of riffle. So we'll put the pipe into the hole. We've got a good flat seal there, the pipe's sitting there nice and stable. So I'll start filling in um, some gravel and cobble round about the, round about the pipe. Oh, a few stragglers, a few 30 pounders. So they're nice and deep in there and some flat stones on top of there will form a, effectively a plug. So when he removes the pipe, the pressure just won't pull all the eggs back up the pipe and out of the red. So we'll remove the pipe slowly and let the gravel fall in about the red. And I, I think probably two eggs come out of there. Absolutely spot on, perfect and that's the red formed. We're blessed up here with just, this is like perfect salmon habitat. This, if you, if you were to choose anywhere for juvenile salmon to grow up, it would be somewhere similar to this, it's perfect. Now that we've seen an example of restoration stocking to kickstart salmon returning to a previously dry river, the final type of stocking is called mitigation stocking. And this comes into play where man-made pressures can't easily be resolved. So mitigation stalking is one of many different types of stalking. The main aim is to mitigate an issue that cannot be resolved. In the case of the stalking in the River Conan system, it's the development of hydropower in the 1940s and 50s that removed a huge amount of juvenile habitat and adult spawning habitat. Now, the dams also prevented the supply of gravel that's suitable for spawning, and this cannot be resolved. So for the last 50 to 60 years, the Cromarty Firth Fishery Board have operated a large scale mitigation stocking program that stocks around about a million eggs into the river each year. So we have a total of 24 decks in the main part of the hatchery and we have more decks towards the back over there. So one of the jobs that we need to do over winter while they're incubating is coming and remove the dead eggs. Now, these are quite easy to spot. The healthy eggs you can usually see have little black spots at this time of the year, which are the eyes. Whereas if you have dead eggs, they have quite a white sheen to them. And we use an egg picker to remove these eggs to stop the other eggs becoming infected. So it's important to realize that the construction of the hydro schemes on the conning in the 40s and 50s have affected more than just the adult spawning habitat. Some of these dams have also made it quite difficult for smolts to find their way out and navigate safely down to the sea. In the last decade or so, this has been confirmed with some scientific studies that both SSE and the board took part in. And if it wasn't for this partnership working between the board and SSE, that wouldn't have been found out. We're both working together to protect the salmon in the conning and to improve habitat across the river catchment where possible. So I'm very lucky to be out in this beautiful natural environment. As a fisherman myself, I appreciate the rivers, being out in nature and the, what the rivers have to offer us in terms of angling opportunities. Like a lot of people, I see that the numbers of salmon have gone down over time it's happened all across Scotland, it's happened across the North Atlantic. This is, this is an issue. Unfortunately, hatcheries aren't necessarily the answer. There are different types of hatcheries, and on one side you have mitigation, which is necessary. On the other side, you have enhancement. The problem is there's very little scientific evidence to show that these enhancement hatcheries actually work. That leads people to draw spurious conclusions from that, and it's very important that we find a middle ground Everybody wants to catch more fish. If you're an angler, that's just natural. But it's important to realize that hatcheries can have damaging effects on the environment. 
In the case of mitigation stalking, the work that we do on the Conan, it is heavily, heavily built on science. We've spent years perfecting what we do. We take every possible precaution to avoid any sort of negative genetic effects. We only stalk in areas where naturally fish cannot spawn. That for us works and that is a sensible option. Enhancement on the other hand, I completely understand why people would want those hatcheries to exist. There is a desire to increase the number of fish in the river. A lot of the time that can be done by other means, habitat restoration, removing barriers to migration, improving water quality, tree planting to reduce temperatures. There's lots of options and hatcheries, although they have their place, may not necessarily factor into improving the numbers of salmon going forward. But really, we need to start looking at them as a requirement in some cases, but not the answer in all cases. Fisheries managers have a duty to take action where we can. If we felt that widespread use of hatcheries would be successful and would not damage wild fish populations, we would embrace this with open arms. It would certainly be popular with many people. Sadly, the reality is much more complicated. As we've heard, hatcheries do have a role to play in addressing some man-made activities and for certain short-term restoration activities. But in most cases, fisheries managers need to focus on addressing the pressures which wild salmon can't overcome on their own. This wider work is vital. It needs to be supported and delivered as an urgent priority. Working to address the pressures that salmon face will almost always be more appropriate as we do everything in our power to protect our precious wild salmon.